Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, right now I pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit today to refresh us, to renew us, and God, if necessary, to restore us. Illumine the words of God today that we might see and feel your presence. Amen. A woman named Alice was uh, entertaining her nephew's uh, son who came over, seven-year-old son, and he found a kite in her house. And this kite uh, excited him. It was one of those Batman kites. And so he said, I want to fly the kite. And she looked outside. It was a hot July day. She said, I'm afraid, Tripper, there's no, there's no wind to fly the kite. He said, well, I think I can do it. I, I still want to fly this kite. And so she said, okay. So he takes off outside. And she peeks through the Venetian blinds just to watch him. And he's running frantically up and back and forth, trying to get that kite off the ground, when most of the time the, the furthest he can get it is basically his shoulders. And he tries and he tries and he tries, but was not able to do it. Finally, he comes back in the house. His head is kind of bowed low. And she says, so how did it go? He said, fine. He said, I guess I'm going to have to wait for the wind. You know, in the day of Pentecost, Jesus instructed the disciples to go back to the upper room and to wait for the wind. And after all, the word uh, spirit also means breath or wind. And the idea there is that they were waiting for a move of God, for the wind of God to come. And he did come. And he, when, he, when this wind blew, it changed their lives and the rest of the world forever. And today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day we celebrate that wind. I want to read the verses up here today, if we could, in Acts chapter 2. If we have those up, do we have those? There we go. We're going to try to read this together, if you like. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind began to come in heaven and fill the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tons of fire that separated and came and rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Should be one. There we go. You can back up that we're not there yet. So the day of Pentecost comes and the spirit comes as a mighty rushing wind. And at that moment, the Bible says that they began to speak in other tongues. And what happened was that there were people from all over the world, from different dialects and different languages, who when they stood up and preached, heard the gospel in their own language. What an amazing event to be in this place with thousands of people. And 3,000, as Paul mentioned in Sunday school, were saved and added to the church. But one person speaks and everybody hears in their native tongue. That was the miracle of tongues. Now, I want to say today that, you know, you, you may notice the red up here. Thank you, Michelle. That represents the day of Pentecost. Red is the, the color. And I think this should be one of the most important celebrated days in the church, outside of maybe Easter and Christmas. I mean, Christmas, you know, the Bible says that, uh, that he took on flesh and became one of us. And na naturally, that's an important event and, and one of the most important statements in Scripture, no doubt. Without Jesus coming as a person and taking on flesh, we wouldn't be here today. 
And of course, Easter, when he, after he had died for us on the cross and rose again from the dead, we know that's essential to the Christian life. Paul says, if, you know, if Christ be not raised, then our faith is in vain. So it's very vital to our faith. But yet, Pentecost... We don't talk about it a lot. And maybe and most churches don't even celebrate it at all. But have you really thought about the importance of Pentecost? Had the Holy Spirit not came on that day? Because after all, Pentecost is the birth of the church. It's when the church actually began and began to indwell people. And so it's the birth of the church. And yes, uh, Easter is important. All these events are important. But had the, the day of Pentecost not come and the church had not been born, who would have taken the gospel to the world? Who would have shared the truth of God to the world? Who would have uh, told the world about a man who came and died for their sins and who rose again the third day? Had it not been for the church, Pentecost is very essential to the world because the church is essential to the world. It's a very important event. And we, not, we must not think it, of it lightly. And I'm glad we have a day in the Methodist church or in other churches set aside where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church because I believe that it's an important event for us to recognize. Now, there's a few things that we want to say about the, the Holy Spirit coming. That was an ingredient of that time that's also necessary for today. And one of those is this. When the Holy Spirit comes, there is unity. If the Holy Spirit is present and He's working in our lives, there will be unity. Whenever you see a church that's divided, uh, you know, the, the Bible says this does not come of God. This comes of, of Satan. It's not of God. But when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we're walking in the Spirit, love will, ex will come from us. And I want to say today that what we see in the world today is not really love. It's not really love in most cases. Now, there's some things out there, there's some uh, peaceful protests out there that is love, that are doing it by the, the right way. And there's supposed to be one in Pipeville, I understand. Uh, hopefully that'll be a peaceful event. You know, and, and we should support those, those things. We should support those things, but here's the thing. Whenever you are thinking about doing something... You need to think about, you know, would this be something that Jesus would have done? What would Jesus do? And would this be something that would, would spread love in the world or hate and unity? It's wonderful when we can come together as a common goal and work together as a church. And whenever the Holy Spirit is working, there is unity in the church. The Bible says that on the day of Pentecost that they were all in one accord. Somebody said what was the, the first book of the Bible? Uh, somebody said it was an accord. A Honda. <laughs> but no, they, they weren't all in one car. But they were all in one place. And there was unity. And there's something about the people of God coming together that things get done and moves the heart of God. And I think it's important for us to be here. I really do. I think it's important for us to, to be able to see each other's faces, even if they have masks covering them sometimes. But I think it's important for us to fellowship with one another. I thank God for technology. We would have been lost without it. For sure, some of us. But it's not the same. It never will take the place of a greeting and a friendly smile. And just something about being together. It's such an important event. So there's unity when the Holy Spirit is present. Now, let me say that it's not always that we agree on everything. 
but we learn to have the spirit of co cooperation and to love each other regardless. The second thing when the Holy Spirit's present is there is diversity. There's diversity. And so there's unity, but there's also diversity. And diversity is a good thing. We understand that we live in a world that today is becoming more and more diverse. And we're learning how to live in that world. Even in our little town of Pikeville, where we have such a diverse population now with the uh, U-Pike and the hospital. And it's something that, you know, we understand that's part of our world now. When we f this country was first founded, uh, you know, that was not exactly the case. And we didn't understand how that we were supposed to love one another and, and allow diversity. And so we squandered that a lot of times. We treated other people not always right. And sometimes that still happens. But diversity is a good thing. And in the church, diversity is supposed to be something that happens as well. We celebrate each other's gifts. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came. There's one spirit. And it rested upon each and every one of them. But it was an individual thing. So that everyone was, you know, your experience may not be my experience. And your personality may not be my personality. And your gifts may not be my gifts. I think we do a damage to church when we try to make everybody fit one mode. And everybody be exactly like we think we ought to be. And the truth is, you have different gifts than I have. And if it's done right, we all work together in unity. And that diversity is a good thing because we have different gifts that we can bring to the table. That's what I love about church. The different, watching people use their gifts and their abilities the way they're supposed to. It was never meant to be a one size fits all. So when the Holy Spirit's presence, there's not only unity, but there is diversity. It continues to work as we, we think about this. But here's another thing. When the Holy Spirit is present. And we saw this on the day of Pentecost. And we continue to see it. When the Holy Spirit's present, there also is responsibility. And one of those, there's many responsibilities. But one of those responsibilities for us is to share the gospel. And that's what has been the command from all along. That we've been empowered. And with empowerment comes responsibility. And there's a lot of responsibility that you may have as a parent. That you didn't have before you were a parent. And all of a sudden you realize one day, I, I, I'm a parent. I'm going to be a parent. It's time for me to grow up. I've got some responsibilities now. I'm going to have to get a job. You know, uh, there are there with empowerment comes responsibilities. And one of our responsibilities is to share the gospel. People will not know about the God that you know unless you share that with them. And I've mentioned this before. There's different ways we can do that. And sometimes it's just simply by living our lives. A quiet and peaceful lives, the Bible says. Trying to get along with people. And sometimes that may mean that God does put it on your heart to share your faith with somebody else. To maybe there's just a nug on you to say, you know what? You need to call, pick up the phone and call somebody. Or you need to walk across the street and talk to your neighbor. Whatever it is, the Holy Spirit leads you to do that. And when He does, you should obey that, by the way. And there will be times that, you, you know, you may just be, you may feel impressed by the Holy Spirit just to be nice to somebody, to help them do something, as Samantha was talking about this morning. It's not always about preaching to somebody. And I mentioned this last time. 
that sometimes it's just simply living a life to where they would be able to see something in us. And then the Bible says to live such a life that when they ask why you have the hope that is within you, you, you have a reason, you have an answer. So that when they say to you, you know, I've noticed that you don't seem worried about all this. Or I've noticed you have a lot of joy. I notice you have a lot of love. Why is that? Then you can simply say, well, let me tell you why. I know God. And so just being able to share our faith sometimes is, is, is simply allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. There's been times probably in your life and mine where we felt like we should say something and we were scared to do that or whatever. So let us pray that the Holy Spirit would make us bold. And that's what happened to the disciples, remember? Remember they all ran for cover and they were scared to death and they were hiding. But on the day of Pentecost, the apostle, uh, Peter stood up and preached to all thousands of people and boldly proclaimed the gospel. And every one of the disciples but one were killed for their faith. But they boldly shared the gospel. Why? Because they had the Holy Spirit and Jesus. They realized He was alive. They had a reason and they had the power to do it. And Jesus said that after my spirit comes upon you, you shall be witnesses to all the world. To Samaria and Jerusalem and the other parts of the world. So God may lead you to reach somebody that I can't reach. To touch somebody I can't touch. And I was reading about a particular fellow, and I think we have the, the slide from Tom Monahan. Uh, he was the founder of Domino's. It was originally a, a business that he bought called Dominic's. And he founded this, uh, he, he bought this business out, and for a while kept the name Dominic's. And uh, later was uh, told that he had to change it. And so uh, one of his drivers came in one day. He was trying to think of a name. He's like, I know what. I have a name. Domino's. And the name stuck. And it's Domino's ever since. Well, Tom Monahan, who founded the company, uh, billionaire. And he uh, started this company and grew it to where they... Uh, I don't know how many, the last count was really had like 5,000 domino stores. But he's also a devout Christian, a Catholic man, a devout Catholic. And more and more of his life now these days, he's actually uh, sold uh, all but like 30% of the business or something and has retired. And now he's doing a very, he's an advocate for the Catholic Church and for his faith. And he he's a, a fights for uh, the pro life, and he uh, is very big on building churches. At one point, I read that he he said that that he had built like five thousand dominoes, and now he wants to build five thousand churches. I read about at one one point in his life that he had two books that he wrote notes in. It was those little spiral books like kids have uh, in school, a red one and a, and a blue one. And he said the red one was uh, it read because it the devil read, but it was all the material things that he wanted and was neat, you know writing down in his ideas. The blue one, picture of heaven was the spiritual things that were important to him. And at one time, the red one took up most of his writing. But these days, there's not much in it. He actually started uh, a farm, too. And uh, that was part of his dream in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. But these days, the blue notebook takes up most of his writings and his thoughts. Which book is more important to you today? Tom Monahan said this. He said, when I stand before St. Peter, <laughs> and he asked me, he said, I don't think he's going to ask me how many pizzas I've sold. What do you think God will ask us today when we stand before him? I believe today that 
There's nothing more important. Nothing more important than to share our hearts with the world with what the world needs right now is Jesus. I believe that we need God more than anything else today. And I really believe, and maybe I'm naive for thinking this, but I really believe if people were to turn to God today and begin to pray and to fall on their face before God, I believe that we'd see a revival in our nation. I believe God would heal our land, and I believe there would be a lot of things change. You know why I believe that? Because I've seen it happen, and I've read about it time and time again. Oh, may the Holy Spirit rush over us. May the wind of God blow through us that our lives will never be the same again. Let us pray for that. Now, we don't have to wait on the Holy Spirit because He's already came. The problem is not that we don't have the Holy Spirit and we have to pray for the Holy Spirit. The problem is we're not yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We want our own way. We want to do our own thing. We have our own opinions and we don't care who we hurt to get what we want. But is that really a Christian attitude? I want to ask the musicians to come as we pray. Holy Spirit, fill us, Lord, today. God, renew us and start a revival right here. God, we need you today. We need you more than ever. Our lives are void without you. All the stuff that we try to acquire and all the achievements we make are nothing without you. But Lord, I pray that we could yield our lives to you, God. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our prejudice. And forgive us, Lord, for turning away from you. Renew us, we pray, with the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.